Today we're going to be making eosin Y, which is commonly used as a biological stain. When it comes into contact with things like proteins or muscle fibers, it stains them a dark red or a pink, which makes it easier to examine them under a microscope. The eosin is quite easily made by reacting fluorescein with bromine, both of which we've made in previous videos. At the end of the video, I'll use the eosin to dye some things, but be aware that I'm not set up to do any proper biological staining, so it's not going to be very impressive. So here we have the three main ingredients that we need. Some 95% ethanol, fluorescein, and bromine. For the reaction, I used 15 milliliters of ethanol, 5.4 grams of bromine, and 2.5 grams of fluorescein, but we will actually need a bit more than 15 milliliters of ethanol in total because there are some washing steps at the end that use it. To start things off, I pour about 2.5 grams of fluorescein into a 25 milliliter round bottom flask. On top of the fluorescein, I pour in about 15 milliliters of 95% ethanol. Before mixing the fluorescein with the ethanol, we actually had a kind of cool color gradient going on. Anyway, that was quickly disrupted after I set up a small ice bath and I got the stirring going. The next thing that we need to do is add 5.4 grams of bromine, and I did this in two separate portions of 2.7 grams. I add the bromine slowly and semi-dropwise, but honestly, I probably could have just dumped everything in all at once. Before we add any bromine, we effectively just have a suspension of fluorescein and ethanol, but as we continue to add bromine, things will start to dissolve. By the time we finish adding the first half of the bromine, almost everything will have dissolved and we'll have a slightly red solution now. By adding half of the bromine that's needed, we're converting most of the fluorescein to dibromofluorescein, which is actually soluble in ethanol. I purposely added the bromine in two separate portions because I wanted the midway point to be very evident, but it's really not necessary to do this. Anyway, I then moved on to adding the second half of the bromine, and this is where we're actually going to be forming our eosin, also known as tetrabromofluorescein. I also want to point out that although I'm using an ice bath here, it probably isn't super necessary, and we only really need to keep the reaction below about 40 C. The addition of the bromine is slightly exothermic and produces some heat, and I really just didn't want to have to closely monitor the temperature the whole time. As I continue to add the rest of the bromine, it seems like the solution clears up a little bit, but honestly, it doesn't really look like much happens. After all the bromine's added, I let it stir in the ice bath for a little bit, and then I take it out to warm up to room temperature. As it stirred at room temperature and warmed up a little bit, it didn't seem like too much was happening, but it did seem like the solution was getting darker. Unfortunately, I didn't catch the transition, but suddenly a lot of precipitate falls out of solution. I kept stirring it for a little bit and the reddish color disappears, and I'm left with a suspension of this yellowish powder. I let it stir for about 20 minutes at room temperature, and then I moved on to filtering it. I quickly made a vacuum filtration setup, and I pulled away the ethanol. I used a small amount of ethanol to wash out the reaction flask, and this ethanol also served to wash the eosin that was on the filter. I repeated the washing step a couple times, and I used something like a milliliter or two milliliters of ethanol each time. After the last washing step, I kept the vacuum on until it looked like the eosin was dry, and then I scraped it off using a metal spatula. I poured the eosin powder out onto a crystallizing dish, removed the stir bar, and dried it in an oven at around 110 C for 30 minutes to get rid of any of the ethanol that might still be there. In the end, I was left with about 3 grams of orangey-yellow eosin Y powder. The yield is actually much less than expected, and honestly, I blame this on the fact that the fluorescein that I used wasn't exactly pure, and there was probably a lot of starting material left over in it. In the end though, 3 grams is more than enough to mess around with, so I'm happy with the results. So what I do now is I make a little bit of stock eosin solution by adding about 0.5 grams of eosin to about 20 milliliters of 95% ethanol. One important thing to note though is that we're working with the unsalted form of eosin and this is not very soluble in water or ethanol and to get things to dissolve, we're going to have to react it with a little bit of sodium hydroxide. We're not doing any proper biological stains here, so I don't even bother measuring out the sodium hydroxide. I just pour a little bit in, and you'll see that slowly things start to dissolve. 
The solution slowly loses its orange color and gradually takes on a slightly greenish color. In reality, the solution is actually dark orangish pink, but the fluorescence of the eosin actually gives it this green color. There's a bunch of excess undissolved sodium hydroxide at the bottom, so I just decant our stock eosin solution into another beaker. Just for fun, I dyed the initials of my channel Nile Red onto a piece of turkey. After I was done playing around with that, I add a little bit of the stock solution to about 100 milliliters of ethanol. I gave everything a few minutes to diffuse and settle out, and then I moved on to try and dye a little bit of turkey. I basically just took some turkey cold cut and dipped it into the eosin solution. I left it in there for something like 30 or 45 seconds, and afterwards I was left with some nice dyed turkey. After washing it with a little bit of water and ethanol, this is what we're left with. In the end, I don't really know what the purpose of this is, but clearly the eosin worked pretty well at dyeing it pink. So just after seeing my incredible dyeing technique, I'm just going to fast forward quickly through a video that shows the actual procedure. So what the person's doing here is they're preparing their slide with a sample on it, and to do this they have to put it into 8 different solutions. After they process the tissue through all these solutions, they can actually do the staining, which is its own little process in itself. One important thing to note here is they're doing H and E staining, which stands for hematoxylin and eosin staining, and eosin's generally not used alone. The two different dyes highlight different parts of the cells, and it allows for the person examining the tissue to differentiate between different parts. Now we can look at some of the tissue that has been stained using H and E, and unfortunately this is the best quality footage that I could find. You can see that the nucleus of each cell, which contains all of the genetic material, has been dyed blue by the hematoxylin, and the rest of the cell has been dyed red. Anyway, the details here aren't super important. The only thing to remember is that cells in general are kind of colorless, and they don't really have much contrast, and without the dyes it would be really hard to tell what's going on. I managed to find a video of a guy examining undyed facial tissue under a microscope, and you can see that without the dye, there's really not much to look at. Anyway, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys on the next one. Again, I'd like to extend a big thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon, and especially those of you who donate $5 or more. I try to include the names of everyone who donated $5 or more, but if I've missed your name, let me know. And also, some people donate $5 or more, but they don't opt in for the rewards. For those of you who did this, I wasn't really sure if you wanted your name there, so I didn't include you, but if you actually do, just let me know and I'll add you on the next one. Also, I had a goal on Patreon for a while of $250, and apparently that's been reached, so I might have to be your slave for something like the next 6 months. So that's it for now, the next video that I'm going to upload is going to be about the fluorescent dye eosin, and I am eventually going to get to making the acetone from calcium acetate and all of the other things I've been promising to do forever.